Hi Leute und herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen und weiteren Folge auf dem Hecht und Barsch Kanal. Heute habe ich einen fantastischen Gast an Bord und zwar Sean Witt aus den Niederlanden. Sean, may you introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. Uh, like I told you, Rico, I'm not gonna try it in German because my German isn't that good. I can understand it a little. But my name is Sean Witt and I'm a fanatic pike angler in the Netherlands. And uh, it's great to be out here, man, to fish uh, together yeah. on this big lake and chase those big pike. Yeah. yeah. Das ist nämlich, was wir heute tun werden. Wir werden heute Hecht angeln auf einem Großgewässer in den Niederlanden. Sean ist ein absoluter Experte, auch was das Hechtangeln angeht. Nicht nur das, fängt auch andere Fische. Und wir versuchen heute, den einen oder anderen Fisch vor die Linse zu bekommen. Erstmal ins Netz und dann vor die Linse. Ob uns das gelingt, das seht ihr natürlich in dieser Folge. Viel Spaß beim Zusehen und dranbleiben. What do you want to start with? Big, small, ah. medium, medium rare, medium rare. <lacht> ja. Wir werden uns heute so ein bisschen zurückfischen. Also wir sind jetzt eigentlich bis ganz ans Ende der, der Welt gefahren, <lacht> des Gewässers gefahren und werden uns so ein bisschen zurückfischen. Wir werden auch unterschiedlich groß angeln erstmal. Also Sean nimmt erstmal einen doch recht großen Köder. Ja. What, are you, what are you gonna start with? 25 cm. It's a pole sail trout from Savage. Yeah. It's been beaten off quite a lot, but the cool thing about a pole sail is that you can present it really, really slow. And it doesn't have like a really sexy swimming motion. It just kicks the tail a bit like this, yeah. but it creates a lot of vibration underneath the water. If you run it close underneath the surface, you can see the water just swirling all around. The nice. cool thing about this one is that you can just let it hang still. So it's a lot of vibration, then still a lot of vibration, and then still. Okay, so this run, uh, runs really shallow if you want to? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but it kicks up a lot of water in the surface, and yeah. you know they like to the hunt upwards, and it's not super deep, but because of the pulse tail. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You could put a rattle in it if you want to. You can. Yeah. You do sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, but if it's really, really murky, now I might do it because there's a lot of algae in the water. Yeah. But um, yeah, and there's still some weed, I see. Yes, yeah. and that's the benefit with this one. You can just run it over, so you yeah. really don't really get stuck in the weeds. So. Okay. okay. It's cool, bait. Ich starte mit dem multi vibe in 5.0. Äh, wieder getrailert mit einem Twister, ganz normalen Twister-Tail. Der macht halt ein bisschen mehr Radau als äh, der Polstail. Aber wir gucken mal. Wir machen jetzt hier mal einen Stretch. Bisschen äh, gucken, wo die Fische stehen. Auf der Kante draußen, das ist circa 5 Meter. Und da war extrem viel Futterfisch auch. Also hat man gesehen. Ähm, die Haubentaucher sind auch echt aktiv hier. Es sieht erstmal ganz gut aus. Ob es jetzt Fisch gibt, müssen wir sehen. Der ist noch langsamer als ich. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm the kind of guy, you know, taking some time in the morning. Oh, really? Oh, uh, yeah. Ah, shit, I have to do this. Ah, uh, ah let me see. Uh, this one was a bit sketchy, like, I don't want to risk it. Better to redo it than to hook into a big fish and just have a sleeve pop off. Yeah. We're good to go. Thanks. Okay, Sean. It's a freshly spooled reel, so. <laughs> First cast of the day. Good luck. Let's check it out. Der Fisch. Kein riesen Fisch, aber Fisch. <lacht> ja, ist okay. ja, just, just. Wow! Not the biggest pike in the world, <lacht> but the first fish, man. <lacht> und äh, das ist auch echt ganz gut, wenn einer groß und einer kleiner angelt damit man zumindest sieht, was funktioniert und dass man auch ein bisschen Kontakt hat, um zu gucken, ob die Struktur überhaupt richtig ist. 
And especially with those big baits, you're like fishing really selective, but it's good to have the feedback that they're fish on the spot. First fish is in. Let's hope it's uh, one of many. Kleiner, aber richtig strong. It's a fatty, huh? Yeah, it's well built. Really well built. Nice. Super. Und der geht natürlich schnell zurück. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ja, ich will nicht sagen wie immer, aber wie so häufig auf den Multi Vibe in 5.0 getrailert mit einem Twister, so wie ich es am liebsten mag, um einfach viel viel schneller noch äh, durchs Kraut zu kommen. Let's go. It's wet and stinky. Uh, I'm used to that. <lacht> oh, you you used to wet and stinky, okay? <lacht> Alright. Was man beim Hechtangeln immer auch machen sollte nach jedem Fisch, ist egal wie groß der ist, ist einmal alles kontrollieren. Gucken, ob das Flur irgendwo beschädigt ist, weil im Kescher rasten auch die kleinen Fische immer ein bisschen aus. Und deswegen einmal auch so übers Flur gucken, ob alles in Ordnung ist und dann kann es weitergehen. Na, well, at least we have some action. Yeah. Ah, this should be more. I mean, they can sense that the temperature is going down and the days are getting shorter, so yeah. they should start feeding. Yeah. Not the ones you want to have. No, <laughs> you know, no, no. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like <I gotcha>. those. <laughs> <laughs> that they take the whole rot with it. Yeah. So, Leute, erster Spot für heute ist abgefrühstückt. Ein Biss hatte ich noch. Das, was Sean natürlich hier macht, ist eine ganz andere Hausnummer. Also mit einem so großen Köder selektiert man natürlich raus. Das heißt nicht unbedingt, dass man mehr große Fische fängt, aber man fängt einfach weniger kleine. Und okay. yeah. yeah. sometimes the big ones are a bit more picky and they want to just not really into the mood of feeding. But if a big meal presents itself and it's too easy to grab, then you might lure them grabbing a big yeah. I mean, the benefit of, of, of wasting so much energy, you know, the, the, the gain so much higher. So there's a theory behind it that they, they do like the big baits, but you know, often ah. big fish being caught on really small losers. Yeah, well, that, so. that yeah. can happen, yeah. of yeah. course, yeah. of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah, it's selective, but you know, we'll, we'll see how it works. And you know, if the, uh, the small ones are just keeping up and just out fishing completely and then I might switch as well. But for now, I have faith in the big ones. Yeah, so but that's continue. good, that's good. I mean, one fish is enough in the end, exactly. you know, exactly. <laughs> if it's a really, really big yeah. one, yeah. everybody's happy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. yeah. That's the goal for today. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Also dranbleiben, wir wechseln mal den Spot, machen das nächste äh, Krautfeld und dann sehen wir, ob es Fisch gibt, auch da. So we are now positioned at a deeper area, which is above like between two and a half and four meters. And then we're casting towards the, uh, the drop off where there should be some grass, but We fished the shallows prior to this spot and there's not that much grass left. And Rico and I were talking about it. It's kind of strange that the grass just disappears out of nowhere sometimes. So, I don't know, maybe it's the length of days. The days are getting shorter that the grass dies down, but there's not much grass. So it makes sense for the pike to go down a bit and sit more on the drop off. And that's usually where the bigger fish are situated as well. So we're fishing a bit deeper now, working from the shallows towards the deep water. And hopefully the big fish are home as well. Wir driften jetzt schon seit äh, circa einer halben bis dreiviertel Stunde die zweite Drift, die wir genommen haben heute. Die erste heute Morgen hat ja einen Fisch gebracht und einen Biss gebracht. Jetzt die zweite Drift hat nichts gebracht, aber es ist wirklich verblüffend, wie Sean auch schon sagte, dass eigentlich hier überhaupt kein Kraut mehr zu finden ist. Aber ja, normalerweise würden wir ansonsten an der Krautlinie entlang fahren auf circa drei bis vier Meter immer ins Flache ans Kraut werfen und dann die Krautkante runter angeln. Das ist jetzt hier einfach gar nicht möglich, weil kein Kraut da ist. Trotzdem ist die Struktur hier in der Unterbrechung ganz, ganz gut, weil wir tiefes Wasser haben, nahezu flachem Wasser. Das würde ich auch generell immer empfehlen, dass man sich Struktur sucht, die äh, nahe zum tiefen Wasser ist. Das heißt, wir haben hier jetzt anderthalb Meter unterm Boot, aber links von uns ist ein tiefes Loch. Das geht auf neun bis elf Meter ungefähr runter. Vor uns sind zwei, drei große Steinwälle, die das Ganze hier in der Uferstruktur auch unterbrechen. Das heißt, hier brechen sich die Strömungen auch, wenn mal der Wind anders steht. Zusätzlich sind wir in einem Tidengewässer. Diese Unterbrechungen sorgen eigentlich immer dafür, dass wir Strömungswechsel haben, dass wir hier unter, äh, Unterströmungen haben, dass wir äh, Futterfisch hier stehen haben, weil hier eben auch das Ganze... Ähm, ja, Kleinzeug angespült wird, wie kleine Krebse und sowas. Ne? Und dann ist so ein Platz eigentlich immer ziemlich gut. 
Vorhin der Fisch kam am Kraut, da war ein kleines Krautfeld und da kam dann direkt auch der Fisch. Und beim nächsten Krautfeld, wo dann wieder was auf dem 360er zu sehen war, kam auch ein Biss. Deswegen müssen wir eigentlich zwingend Kraut finden. Trotzdem würde ich solche Strukturunterbrechungen immer fischen. Denn äh, große Fische, also gerade große Fische, stellen sich auch gerne mal dahin, wo kein Kraut ist. Wo halt einfach mal eine andere Struktur in der Uferstruktur ist, weil sich dort halt eben große Brassenschwärme manchmal ansammeln und das ist das, wo natürlich die ganz, ganz großen Pikes auch hinterher sind. Uh, Sean, we're gonna change the spot. Yeah, let's find, find some kraut. Yeah, let's find some kraut. <laughs> Sauerkraut. <laughs> Sauerkraut. <laughs> let's find some Sauerkraut. I switch completely to boat fishing. But the occasional time that I fish from the, from the bank, I really do like it. Like I fish the polders in the Netherlands. The times I do it, I do enjoy it. And then I start to think about why I'm not doing it more often. So. Uh, Yeah. In winter time, it's really, really fun, really fun to do. But then again, the boat, it offers so much possibilities. You know, you can change spot really easily, you can change different techniques. I like the trolling a lot as well with the big baits in the Netherlands uh, and in Sweden. I like the pelagic game, casting for Xander, Perch, mostly pike. Yeah, and a boat just offers so much flexibility. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a big boat, I think. A lot of people get mistaken that you know they see all the big boats with the big engines and yeah. all the fancy technique. But I fish with a small rubber boat as well sometimes in Amsterdam, and just it just has a small electric engine and a battery, and just just good to go. So uh, yeah, yeah. Can, I, I always say like the boat doesn't catch the fish no, in the end. You know, no, it's just no. the boat is just it's just your help to catch some something somewhere. Yeah, and, yeah you know, definitely. When the definitely. boat can handle the water, yeah. Then it, it doesn't matter how big the boat is. And, and there's a lot fast. of benefits in using a small boat as well, because you can fish waters that are like inaccessible with a, with a big boat. Yeah. And there are really good fish and a lot of good fish on, uh, on those small lakes and oh, small yeah. water systems. So, uh, yeah, and that's where you have an advantage over those big expensive boats. So, uh, yeah, just any boat out there will help you catch fish. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Switch to a smaller pilster, 18 centimeter, roach version, line through as well. And I'm casting it with a Savage Gear. The Custom Predator, which is a classic, it's been around for a couple of years. It's a 240 gram casting weight rod, 285 centimeters long. And I'm using one of the new SC10 300 bait casters, which just got released. And we are fishing on a area where we finally found some, uh, some kraut, some grass. Hopefully the pike are here. Um, there's a lot of algae in the water, so the clarity isn't superb, but we did have the first couple of contacts on a similar spot. Hopefully we can find some pike over here. The way I'm working the pulse tail is that I'm um, working it pulsating. So um, I'm fishing it with a steady retrieve and then I speed it up a little and let it hang still. Speed it up a little. Got some grass now. And inside the pulse tail there's a little rattle, but it's a horizontal rattle. So once you start moving it like this, it starts clicking, which gives it some extra noise underneath the water. Geil, <lacht> super geil. <lacht> Zweiter Fisch des Tages, wieder auf den Multivibe. Ach, jetzt ist er los, das ist auch ganz gut. Ist immer am besten, wenn die Fische sich schon gleich von alleine losschütteln. Hier wieder der Multivibe. Wow, der ist auch schon ganz schön zerhackt. Das mache ich generell beim Hechtfischen immer erstmal den Köder weg. Gut, das ist nur ein Einzelhaken, 
Aber wenn ihr Drillinge habt, thanks, wenn ihr Drillinge habt, dann ist es natürlich unerlässlich, die Drillinge aus dem Netz rauszuholen, weil die Hechte oft schlagen und dann äh, kann man natürlich mit der Hand auch in den Drillingen hängen bleiben. Ja, der hat aber ganz schön Dampf. Ah, schöner Fisch, so denke knappe 80, na 75 vielleicht. Ja, ist ungefähr die gleiche Güte wie der vorhin. It's the same size as the yeah, one before. So. But a healthy fish is one. Yeah, healthy fish. Richtig schöner, schöner Pike. Ja. Wasser ist auch nicht mehr so warm. Man merkt, die Fische werden fitter. Fisch Nummer zwei. Ich bin ganz happy eigentlich, muss man sagen. Und äh, ja, findet man Kraut, findet man Fisch. You find weed, you find yeah. fish. Yeah, that's the key. Ja. You really need to find the kraut. Also gerade in so Gewässern, wenn das Kraut weg ist, findet Krautflächen, die noch da sind, überall da, wo Kraut zu finden ist, da werdet ihr auch mit Sicherheit Pikes finden. Also das als kleiner Tipp am Rande. Jetzt machen wir weiter und gucken, dass wir noch einen kriegen. Let's go. So, neuer Spot, neues Glück. Hopefully. <lacht> genau, hoffentlich. Water is better. It looks, uh, ich, genau, das Wasser sieht viel, viel besser aus hier. Yeah. Wir hatten jetzt drüben auf der anderen Seite sehr viel Blaualge. Das sind dann immer diese grünen Schwebepartikel und diese grünen Klümpchen, die sich dann bilden. Das ist hier nicht der Fall. Also es ist ein bisschen Alge im Wasser, aber lange nicht so viel wie drüben. Das ist jetzt auch die windabgewandte äh, Seite, also die ablandige Seite. Und wir sind relativ... Uh, uh. Yeah, it's a nasty rock out there, yeah. Wir sind relativ nah, <lacht> wo wir gar nicht sein sollten. I wasn't the expecting to go yeah, the wind that, that much. Yeah. Wir werden jetzt hier ein bisschen fischen. Einmal so eine große Bucht hier ausfischen. Wir, wir bewegen uns dann auch wieder auf der tiefen Linie, ich denke so zwischen drei und fünf Meter, irgendwie sowas. Je nachdem, wie nah wir ans Kraut kommen, weil das ist auch mal sehr, sehr wichtig. What, uh, what, what's your plan? Yeah, do you like, want to stick to the big soft lure? Yeah, or? big soft lure, maybe a big jerk bait on it as well. If you're gonna do between three and five meters, then I want to fish the drop off a bit deeper. Yeah. And the water is a bit more clear, so probably want to have something with a bit of hang time and then uh, yeah. give them time to take it. So uh, yeah, good uh, idea. That looks promising. So Good idea. Yeah. I think I'm gonna stick to the to the lure that caught fish? Well, with the uh, with the algae, like vibration on a, on a chatterbait like that, it's really good, so yeah. yeah, I think it's a good choice as well. Yeah, yeah. so we'll see. Uh, yeah, let's start, man. Let's go, man. Have fun. <laughs> okay, a serious <laughs> jerkbait, you mean? <laughs> I'm using a uh, big hybrid jerkbait. Um, this is a custom-made one with a hybrid. It's a mix between a diver and a glider. A glider goes from left to right and a diver goes down a bit. So this one goes down to the left, down to the right and it also has a wobble. And what I like about this one is that it's almost completely suspending. So when I get it to a certain depth, I can pause it and then I can, you know, wait for one or two seconds and then start my retrieve again. So you get a really erratic motion. And on slow days that can be a key to triggering those, uh, those bigger fish. And also, because it's a hybrid, you can, when you hit it like really hard, like I'm doing now, I can get it to a certain depth. When I do like a slower retrieve with longer pauses, it stays more towards the surface. But when I start working it really, really hard, I can get it like a meter, maybe even two meters deeper than normally. And this jerkbait has some bumps on its nose. That's because I've been fishing with this one in Sweden a lot as well. And you have a really rocky bottom. And then you hit the stones at like two and a half or three meters deep. So that's, that's about the, uh, the depth that the bait is running. So it's a really versatile bait. Oh, it's really shallow. Yeah. I'm gonna put it on Oh, huge perch, huge perch. Jesus, what a perch. Alter, is that a barge? I just take the... Don't... Is no, it? no, not that one. Eh? <laughs> I'll leave the one out like that. Nice. Oh, that can be a 50. <laughs> that can be a 50. Sein. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> really nice. Yeah. Oof. Well, that's actually the thing. When you cast... You get, size Lewis. you get everything. Yeah. Guckt euch diesen Barsch an. Na, das ist doch mal ein Fisch. Also ich glaube nicht, dass er 50 hat, aber messen müssen wir ihn auf jeden Fall. Nee, ist er nicht. 47. Ja. Aber 47er Barsch ist natürlich eine absolute Bank. Ein Wahnsinnsfisch. Let it 
it rain! <lacht> ja, hier nochmal der Köder und äh, man muss sagen, der ist eigentlich schon so zerrippt, der gehört in die Hall of Fame. Ähm, ich habe zum Glück noch einen von den Twistern dabei. Ich trailer den Köder so an, dass der Tail nach oben hängt und nicht nach unten. Ich habe den ein bisschen vorne gekürzt, weil er sonst einfach als Trailer zu lang wäre, wenn ich jetzt das komplette, den kompletten Twister benutzen würde. Ich habe zwar einen großen Köder von der Silhouette her und auch von der, von der Aktion her hinten aus dem Twister-Tail. Ich habe aber einen nicht zu großen Köder eben auch für zum Beispiel große Barsche. Und jetzt geht es weiter und ich hoffe, da kommt noch mal einer. Geil, bis jetzt Köder des Tages, muss man sagen. Gut. It's good to be out there and just hunt for those big fish again, because it has been since June, I think, that I haven't really properly fished for pike, because the temperature has been too, too, yeah. uh, too high. So I've been fishing for Xander and some perch fishing, but it's good to be out here and just chase those big pike. And I like it, casting the bigger baits. I'm totally okay with just casting the entire day for one bite. Like it's the, the, the game plan that I'm used to, but, um, ja, es ist gut, hier zu sein und zu sehen, dass die Temperaturen sich verändern. Und es ist gut, dass die besseren Zeiten für die Pike-Fischen kommen. Weil es zu warm war, für zu lange Zeit. Ja, das ist das Video für heute. Ich hoffe, es hat euch Yeah. <laughs> What? But he came up like it looked came up like a dolphin or like a seal. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. like really crazy. What? But did he hit it? No, but then I I, I because he came up before my lure, he like ra rose through the surface and like he was like peeking upwards and then I started speeding up the lure and then he he swirled like he 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 maybe took a swipe at it but Strange, What huh? What was he doing? Like, <laughs> maybe he missed it. Yeah, it could coming be. up, missed it, and then was up on the surface already. Yeah, yeah. but in between the grasses, well, two two and a half meters. Yeah, so, just yeah. right on the edge, actually. It was a good fish. Yeah, it was a good fish. Whoa! Probably one on the perch. Ooh. Cast over there. Sure. Yeah. Oh. Yikes. Oh. Could have been a big Xander as well. Oh yeah. Those strikes are pretty hard. <laughs> oh fuck, it's off. Oh, Jesus. Ah. In between the small pieces of grass, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. So, also das scheint tatsächlich die erste Drift zu sein, die äh, richtig produktiv ist. We still have plenty of time. Yeah, we do. Maybe we do the drift It was a productive time. drift, so. Yeah, 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 who knows, yeah. yeah. Maybe a small lunch break. That would be good idea, get some energy and then... Fresh, uh, fresh yeah. energy, fresh yeah. water, you know. Exactly, good yeah. idea, good, good idea. Good idea. Switched over to eight jerk baits, 16 centimeter jerk baits. And I am using 0.32 millimeter braided line. Tied it directly to a fluorocarbon leader, a FG knot. And um, this fluorocarbon is a bit short now. And the main reason is that I've been trimming it down a lot. So like Enrico explained, I think after the first fish, once you get a fish, you want to inspect the fluorocarbon, see if it's damaged. And the thing with fluorocarbon also is that it's really easy um, to craft those leader yourself. I'm using a double sleeve and I put the fluorocarbon through the loop of the, through the whole double sleeve, put it back out on the other side. Use a lighter to melt the tip of the, uh, the fluorocarbon on the back end and then I push it back and then because it's molten you can't really push it back through the sleeve again. So it's already fit in that way and then you just crimp it down a little. Swivel 
and a snap and you're good to go a really easy and clean setup and you can maintain it on the ball fairly easily so when you see it's damaged you just cut a piece off and you retie the uh, the leader again with a sleeve what leader material do you prefer for uh, using jerk baits in, in particular well some people like the stiffness of titanium and i think with a lot of modern jerk baits like this one now, this is a scout jerk bait um, they're fairly easy to fish and this one for instance you can fish them with a steady retrieve and already has some motion. There's a lot of jerk baits out on the market where you don't need to tap it really um, wildly to get some action into the bait. Before, earlier on, I was using a big hybrid and then you need to pay attention because you need to give the bait slack, but not too much slack. Otherwise, the softness of the fluorocarbon might get too much slack and then it gets tangled into your, uh, your treble. So if you're beginning with jerkbait fishing, you might want to consider fishing with titanium because it's a bit more stiff. But later on, when you start to get used to fishing with jerk baits and you get a bit of a feeling how the bait is running underneath the surface then for me fluorocarbon is really easy to use uh, and to work with as well because you know how it moves and you know the right amount of slack you need to give to get the bait moving underneath the water so yeah, yeah I prefer fluorocarbon in like 99% of the time actually now yeah. I almost switch <laughs> which is a pretty high percentage <laughs> yes yes the, the bird has uh, caught multiple uh, perch like smallies huh? yeah small ones yeah and a reiger. How do you call these in German? Reier. Reier. Reiger. Reier. In the plants. spot um, the wind has picked up a bit so that could be good for pike activity we are in an area where it slowly comes up from like four meters towards three two and a half with big patches of grass and then a really shallow area close by the wind is blowing quite nicely to make a really long uh, really good long drift so uh, I'm gonna continue hammering the big bass I think Enrico is going to continue with the channel bait, I guess. I don't know, I don't know. This looks really, really good now. <laughs> so it can, I can be imagine that, you're that, uh, yeah. that I'm going to switch to something all right. bigger. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. ja, wie ihr unschwer erkennen könnt, habe ich jetzt auch zu dem Besenstiel gegriffen. <laughs> ja, das sieht hier wirklich sehr, sehr hechtmäßig aus, also sehr äh, großhechtmäßig. Und deswegen äh, fische ich jetzt den großen Drunk Dancer. Jetzt hier habe ich mich einmal für den Cappuccino Clara entschieden. Das ist eine richtig, richtig geile Farbe mit dem leichten goldenen Schimmer hier. Vielleicht switche ich auch noch mal zum Köfi Perch oder zum weißen, also Stratzatella Sara Drunk Dancer. Aber so hier vernünftig angeködert, Pycraft System mit zwei Drillingen, beide eingepiekst, weil die sich sonst beim Werfen oft äh, in die Seite stechen und dann kriegt man eventuell einen Fehlbiss. Und dann gucken wir mal, ob das hier laufen kann oder nicht. Es sieht auf jeden Fall sehr, sehr catchy aus. Also mal sehen. Das ist der Adler, Erik. Siehst du? When this guy comes around, oh, you know, yeah, all the other birds, birds are like, like, okay, okay, okay let's go. make some space. <laughs> this fucker's gonna eat us. Well, like we talked about, the one that rips the rod out of your hand, like, yeah. Mm. Two trebles and still got off, like, and it wasn't a subtle take. Oh, that's bad. Uh. That's bad. Oh, that was a good take. <sighs> one of the takes you still feel in your ribs, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Can't show, can't show, uh, durchaus sehen, dass die großen Köder dann dementsprechend auch die stärkeren Fische bringen. Weniger Kontakte natürlich, aber, aber eben oftmals halt auch ein paar richtige Brecher. 
it's quite an achievement to miss a tank like this. I mean, it was like, but yeah. Yeah, the drag is completely shot. <laughs> uh, and you said you still have to, uh, to meet a big girl from the Haring fleet? <laughs> yeah, I got like, like, I lost a couple ones that are like, yeah. So too good to be true. Yeah. <laughs> I got a score to settle. Ja, das ist äh, Hechtangeln, so wie ich es eigentlich auch liebe. Also große Köder werfen den ganzen Tag und eigentlich auf diesen richtig, richtig geilen, brachialen Biss hoffen. Es macht sehr viel Spaß, mit Sean zu fischen, weil Sean halt genau so ein Typ ist, der fischt und fischt und fischt und fischt und wirft und wirft und wirft. Einfach ohne was zu sagen dabei so richtig. Klar, man unterhält sich und so, es ist auch alles gut, aber, aber das ist halt Hechtangeln. So richtiges Hechtangeln und das macht riesen Bock, auch wenn das ziemlich monoton aussieht, macht es richtig viel Spaß, weil man so jeden Wurf einfach im Bauch hat, gleich knallt. <lacht> <lacht> ja. äh, Wasserfarbe ist sehr gut, es ist jetzt wieder ein bisschen klarer, vorhin war es etwas trüber, aber hier ist die Wasserfarbe sehr gut, der Wind hat ein bisschen aufgefrischt, wir haben ein bisschen Bewegung im Wasser, die Strömung zieht hier so ein bisschen drüber. Ist schon ein geiler Spot, also ist jetzt schon wirklich, sieht sehr gut aus, jetzt fehlt nur noch der eine Fisch. You know, is it really a pattern or is it just because you change a certain lake or the fishing has just improved? It's yeah, or you just do something else, you know, just by because it's yeah. slow, slow biting or whatever. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, of course, there, there should be some kind of pattern. Yeah. Water, temperature, maybe moon. Yeah. But this is, you know, many people <laughs> discuss <Yeah>. about this. <laughs> yeah. The gravity moon. in the tides. Yeah, the gra yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that can be, of course. Yeah, you know? could be. I know that many, many, many people, also people that catch serious, a serious amount of big fish, yeah. say that the moon, especially when it, uh, when it goes to full moon, yeah. the week before, is produce, producing many, many big fish. Yeah. Yes and no sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know? but you catch big fish on other moments as well, so. Exactly, and that's why I asked you about the pattern. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you really like have an Excel sheet with your 500 plus meter pikes, uh, that, that's what, what is always interesting to me, asking people if they recognize a that's pattern why, That's why I lost interest in, uh, in, in you know, keeping up on that Excel list, because I couldn't really find any patterns that I was like, okay, this is something that's really, really useful because I always start doubting like, okay, is it maybe something I changed myself? And what's the logic behind it? For instance, the moon as well, like what's the logic behind it? And it could yeah. be the tides, but okay, then why are fish on smaller lakes, which are hardly affected by, you know, moons and tides, but, you know, does it affect of, uh, just have any effect on those lakes as well? Yeah. But that's also with like, you know, colors and bait sites. It's obviously the stuff you're using a lot is, the stuff that's going to produce the most fish. So. Exactly. Yeah. The more you fish, the more fish you catch. Uh, exactly, also that. That's it. Because I started working fully in the fishing industry, I'm out on the water a lot more, and then the consequence is that you start to catch more fish. So it's like, yeah. It's not maybe the lure choice, but the fact that you're putting in more time. Yeah. Fishing is really hard to be statistic and scientifically about. I mean, especially when it comes to catching fish. Yeah, I mean, you, you, should, you should like write down everything. Yeah. You know, but also you have like air pressure, yeah. water temperature. But you also have like troubling factors then. And if you really should write down everything, you should also log the fish that you have lost and the amount of takes that you're getting. But people are not doing that. Yeah, they're only sure. logging the fish that they yeah, caught. But right. if you have like an unlucky day and you lose a lot of fish, in the statistics it shows as a shitty day. But maybe you had like 20 fish on and, and like 10 really, really good fish. But if you lost them, like, is it then yeah. a statistically bad day or? No, because you had a lot of good contacts. So, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, right. Interesting. Very really cool. You know, I <laughs> I go fishing when I have time. Same for me. Like I just go out. I just want to be out here and you know just just grind it out, like we're doing today as well. Yeah. And if you keep hammering it and keep going on, then you you, know, you will run into that big fish. Yeah. And yes, there are patterns that you can find with like yeah, certain sure. spots and you know sure. and wind, wind, for example. Oh, wind yeah. is always something really good. Yeah. You know, more wind is always better than less wind yeah. or no wind. When the wind is pounding, you need like a drift anchor, and you're questioning yourself, like, is this really like comfortable to fish? That's usually when the big ones come. So, and also like on certain spots, like, you can also just have bad luck that 
some other skilled angler came along and he just took uh, took those big fish from that spot. And yeah, then just like, half an hour before oh, it's a you, shitty right? day. But no, <laughs> someone else caught them. So yeah. It's, yeah. But I think you learn to have patience when you're confident enough, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you can gain confidence in all kinds of things, like a certain color or statistics to give you a, a certain amount of certainty. Did you fish your entire life? or? Yeah. How old were you when you caught your first pike? My first pike? Yeah. Nine. All right. That's fairly my, young. My first, my first that I still remember. Still remember, huh? okay, yeah. okay. It was 96 centimeters. I will never forget it. It was oh, the really? thir 13th oh. of December, 1998. 19 96 is a good one to start 1989. with. 1989, 1989, not 98, yeah. <laughs> nice. I was like 20, 22 or something, and then I just picked it up and caught my first pike, and then started looking up on the internet and then I saw like bulldogs and all kinds of trolling lures. Yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. Yep, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Down the rabbit hole. Yeah. You know, if, if there's a technique working for you to catch fish, then it's good. Yeah. And it's not better or worse than other techniques or other methods or, you know. And yeah. you're not better than me. Are oh, you fucking... No, really? Jesus, yeah. <laughs> okay. It just bumped it. I quit, I quit talking. Yeah, but they're not really, really biting, huh? No, this one bite. is. Uh, this one wasn't a, a proper bite at all. They didn't even pull the hooks. And also, I think like doing multiple different techniques, you learn a water way faster. Of course, and that's what makes you good. Yeah, exactly. in the end, and that was ma makes you like versatile. You yeah. know, you can react on yeah. situations, yeah. can adapt to certain things. And like I said, in the end, it's also about having fun, I guess. And like, yeah. I know guys that are just grinding it out and not catching many fish and being bummed out the entire time, but they refuse to pick up trolling. And then you have some guys that are just really happy with trolling with small crankbaits behind the boat and they catch like 10 fish a day and they're, yeah. Yeah. they're super happy when they go home. And like, yeah. who's doing the better job then? Like, yeah. yeah. Ah, well. Oh, why do I have to be so far out every time? <laughs> so, hitting close to the boat. Ach, Leute, das ist schon geil. Ach, das ist schon geil, wenn die Fische so reinscheppern. Es ist kein riesengroßer Fisch, auch jetzt nicht mit dem großen Köder. Hat sich nicht viel verändert. Uh <lacht> Hat sich nicht viel verändert von der Größe her. Got it. Ganz. Aber es ist ein Fisch. Ich habe geskippt äh, auf den Köfi Perchet in 23. So, kleine OP. Jetzt erstmal, der Fisch ist im Wasser, das ist das Wichtige. Jetzt erstmal die Drillinge draußen aus dem Netz. Das ist das Zweitwichtigste. Und dann kann ich euch den Fisch präsentieren. Richtig starker Fisch auch. Richtig Power gehabt. Er wird auch gleich schlagen. It's gonna, it's gonna shake. I know. Still feisty, yeah. It's gonna shake. <lacht> Aber ganz, ganz toller Fisch. Oh, richtig schön gezeichnet. Super Fisch. Really nice Fisch. So, der ist gleich soweit, ich weiß es. <lacht> nice. Der Fisch kam dann eben auf den größeren Köder, Köfi Perch Chat in äh, 23. Real Perch, meine, muss ich sagen, doch an solchen Tagen absolute Lieblingsfarbe. Schön Kontrast zwischen Rücken und Bauch, also echt, echt toll. Der flankt auch sehr, sehr schön, hat hier hinten noch diesen roten UV-aktiven Tellerschwanz. Also ich habe ein Doppelstinger-System an der Shallow Screw und äh, habe hier vorne eins unserer tangsten Gewichte, also von LMAB. Das tangsten Gewicht ist eigentlich für Jika Rigs gedacht, aber habe ich hier einfach in den Wirbel eingehängt und das ist ein 7 Gramm, also ein 7,2 Gramm Gewicht. Das hängt hier vorne und das stört auch gar nicht beim, beim Fischen selbst. Und der Köder hat halt genau diese Action. 
Und das ist das, was es ausmacht. Die beiden Drillinge habe ich eingepiekst und hier unten einmal 7 Stahlvorfach mit 40 Kilo montiert. Also das hier habe ich alles selbst gebaut mit den Sprengringen auch von LMAB. Ja, das funktioniert sehr, sehr gut, wie man gesehen hat. Ich mag einfach die Aktion von dem Curfew Perchet. Ja, richtig, richtig geil. Ich bin sehr, sehr happy. Also für mich ist der Tag bis jetzt wirklich gut. Sean, I would say we do a last drift, a little longer drift. Ja. Yeah. On the drop off over there. That's good. Yeah, let's take the drop off over there and see if we uh, get a final shot at uh, getting a big fish uh, in front of the camera. But yeah. yeah, we already had some nice fish. But yeah, one yeah. One really good one will be great. So uh, exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah, let's, let's go. go for it. Yeah. yeah. I saw it, God man. Fuck. Damn. <laughs> I saw it. I really saw it. <laughs> I just went I after your lure. Ripping out the grass it, like. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Usually uh, oh, eager to get it. Leute, ihr könnt es euch nicht vorstellen. Sean hat geworfen, dann hat er irgendwie im Kraut gegangen. Und dann war irgendwie Kraut dran, glaube ich, und hat er ganz schnell gekurbelt und ich habe so hingeguckt und auf einmal kommt von unten ein Pike und versucht sich das Ding wegzuhauen. Ah! <lacht> oh. <lacht> That's the fun thing about pike fishing as well, that it's just so unpredictable and they do the craziest stuff. So, yeah. <lacht> <lacht> Bloody Gras. Kein Gras. Kein Gras, kein Fisch. Ah, oh, well. What do you think? Yeah, we can pack it up. Yeah? Yeah. It's not like we didn't try. <laughs> it's crazy, I mean, this is... Oh, yeah. Now it has been the best pike fishing weather uh, for sure. that you can get. But we have more activity during the uh, calm and sunny uh, yeah. hours of the day than uh, this overcast with wind, so... Yeah. That's kind of crazy. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it is. It is what it is. It doesn't as you make said. any sense at all. So yeah. Yeah, it's what it is. But we gave it our best, and uh, nonetheless, you know, uh, we enjoyed yourself really much out on the water. It was a good day to be out. Yeah. Just that not much activity. But, yeah. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for having yeah, well, you on the show. Yeah. That was really, really awesome. It's good to that be you here. took your time. Yeah, of course. To join us. Well, it's fun to be out on the water. We talked about it a lot, so we finally did it. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I think this is not the last time we're gonna fish together. No, we're gonna give it a second chance. Yeah. It's fun to be out on the water with like-minded people. So that's always fun. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, that's cool, man. Yeah. Thanks a lot. No, thank you, man. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. Also, Leute, wenn euch das Video gefallen hat, lasst auf jeden Fall einen Daumen hoch da, ein Abo da, wenn ihr es noch nicht getan haben solltet. Alles zum Tackle findet ihr natürlich immer unten in der Videobeschreibung. Ich freue mich, dass Sean heute da war. Wir sind raus für dieses Mal, aber nicht für immer. Also macht's gut und Petri Hall. Ciao.